Welcome to Level Up with Winnie Sun. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and happy Thursday to you. How are you this week before the holidays? I know it's like crazy that it's like next week. If you're joining us on the replay, hello, hello. Thank you so much for tuning in. And do me a favor in comments, definitely include the word replay so I get to catch your view. I know many of you watch on the replay. I certainly don't want to miss you. And if you're joining us live, well, hello, my friends, because welcome to the show. You know we are here with the Make your money series which is so exciting so let's start with the financial markets the dow closed up 147 points today nasdaq also up 106 points s p up 21 that's right all three up in fact lots of talk lots uh, everybody's looking at really what's going on with the stimulus package and i wanted to say a quick shout out hello and thank you to my dear friend Lori konish of cnbc an article that she shared today i want to make sure to get on your radar and this is it you can see um second stimulus check may be on the way here's what advisors say uh, you should do with your money. And um, yes, I actually shared lots of comments in there. So definitely take a moment to check that out. See what I have to say about what you should do with this. I think you're going to find this helpful because this is these are the si kinds of things that we're talking to clients about um, all day long. In fact, tomorrow I'm doing a big workshop at a, a, a large um movie studio soon for their employees talking about year end financial planning. And, you know, I wanted to segue a little bit, you know, you may have seen this news as well. The FDA today, the panel endorsed the second COVID-19 vaccine here in the United States. Moderna wins a key note, a key vote, I should say, for emergency use. So now the United States has two vaccine options, very uh, very, very good news. I know for many, uh, many of our clients, in fact, and friends who are in the healthcare industry. Um, in fact, one of our, our top physician clients, she just got her vaccine, her first shot on Monday. So she's very excited. She's definitely a role model. And we'll see how that unfolds. So lots of things happening. Let's talk also about kids and money, should we? I mean, that's today's hobby. You know, um, did you know, and I want to share this, I thought it was really interesting. You know, as a parent of three kids, I'm always looking to learn more about kids and how they handle money, how they feel about money. Did you know that kids who had chores actually fared better later in life? In fact, chores is one of sort of the, the big things on how kids can be more, help, more healthy, more happy, independent adults. That's actually an, a study that sh came out of, the University of Harvard. So I'm, I'm curious how many of you had chores growing up. I certainly had a ton. My kids definitely have a lot now too. Research also shows that uh, adult money habits are set by the age of seven. You know, so those of you who are parents and have younger children, you might think, well, this is something they can learn in middle school or high school, but actually you got to get to them the sooner the better. In fact, 34% of parents say that their family's approach to financial matters is to not discuss finances with their children at all and let kids be kids. So actually, you're going to learn hopefully today that that's actually not the way that this should be. And according to FINRA, which those of you in the financial industry, some of us, when we hear FINRA, you know, we get different feelings about FINRA. Anyway, uh, only 60% of the nation's residents could not pass a basic financial literacy quiz. Really, really shocking. You might not be shocked, but you know, maybe this is the reason is, is because only 28 states here in the United States have recommended financial literacy standards in middle school. So we have helped. Don't worry. I know those statistics are a little frightening, but we've got definitely someone here that can help us. I want to introduce my guest today, Alexa Serrano, who is the uh, banking editor at finder.com. Alexa, thank you so much for being here with us. How are you today? I'm good, and yourself? Good. Well, I'm better now that you're here. <laughs> well, let's, um, so where are you joining us from today, and um, how, how, how are you doing? I'm joining from Miami, Florida. I'm doing well. <laughs> I have a little bit of a cold, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm well. 
Well, I'm, I'm glad that you're here with us. I know, you know, you do a lot of, I know the, the folks at finder.com do a lot of great work for many people. Um, one thing that we're going to talk about today is, is talking about starting, you know, you starting your kids out with a holiday budget, talking about how to, not just for the holidays, but beyond, right. Mm -hmm. Um, talking about kids, the value of a dollar, um, what, what are, what are some findings that you have on what, what do you think about teaching kids about money? Yeah, so the holidays are a perfect time to start teaching your kids how to budget. You know, kids love gifts, but they also love to give back as well. So it will it's a great opportunity because you can make it fun, like a fun project on, you know, who do you you ask your kids, who do you want to give a gift to? You start developing a list see you know if you've given them an allowance you could see how much money that they do have and then you know work with them to try to see how they can stretch that dollar and another way is to get more creative um you know you could have like a little art project that you can make ornaments for family you know you could do do-it-yourself gifts and those could be just as meaningful um i know when i was a kid i um i I don't know how I did it, but I stretched twenty-five dollars amongst my family members, um, and even now as an adult, um, I've done do-it-yourself gifts um, for like my family and friends. So, what are you making this year for your family and friends? This year, <laughs> um, I'm going to be making um, coasters. Okay. Um, I've done it before, um, so I've you know, I look through photo albums and I paste it onto, I go, I go to Home Depot to buy tiles and then I get Mod Podge, put it on the tile and then I'll get a clear adhesive um, for the top. Um, so that's what I'd, I'll be doing this year. Oh, how wonderful. What a great thing to do. And what a great memory for your family too. Well, mm -hmm. let me ask you this, you know, I, I hear a lot of parents sort of um, tackle this a little bit of whether or, or what's the best way for kids to save money? You know, some people say, yeah, you know, I have my kids, they have a piggy bank. Some people have a check, not check account, a savings account at the bank. Some people just use envelopes. Um, what are your thoughts on that? What do you recommend that, um, that children use to save money? Yeah, so if you have the opportunity, it's you could start teaching your kids at a very early age. And you made a reference to this earlier. Um, you know, the University of Cambridge has a study that has revealed that mon kids can form money habits uh, as early as seven years of age. Um, so when you're teaching your kids, it's really about finding those everyday teachable moments related to money. Um, for instance, that could look like you're at the store and you give your child, I don't know, two or three dollars and you tell them, okay, you have this amount of money, buy a snack and see what they do. Um, kids tend to mirror us. So teaching them the concept early is key. And you can do this by also explaining your action. You know, we don't really think about this. Um, and so what this means would be, let's say, if you're at the store and you're going to buy, you're buying salad. Why did you choose that specific salad bag? Is it because it was cheaper because it was a generic brand? Um, was it on sale? Was it buy one, get one free? It's great to explain that decision to your kids and then they'll start to pick it up on their own, whether or not they realize it. Will they start thinking critically about money in that way? And um, in terms of piggy banks, um, that's a good way to uh, also have your kids start to learn. But I'm actually not a fan of a piggy bank or a jar. Um, I think that if you're going to give a, well, here's why. Um, so if you get one piggy bank or jar for your kid, you could start to confuse and blur the lines between keeping your savings and spending separate. So if you have one jar, they'll be using that for saving and spending. Um, 
So I actually recommend if you're going to go the route of a piggy bank or a jar that you get your child at least two jars, one for spending and one for saving. And if you get a third jar, it would be for sharing or giving. And that could even help your child start to learn how to give back to the community. That's a great tip. Thank you, Luxa. That's super helpful. And those of you who are just tuning in watching us right now, we're, not, we're talking about really how to help your kids sort of understand what a budget is and really help them with a, a good financial foundation, especially right now um, um, during the holidays, during COVID. It's, it's a really good idea to give them the, the knowledge that they want. In fact, I will share that I actually have a course on LinkedIn Learning uh, titled How to Teach Your Kids About Money that we'll make sure to get on your radar to share with you. And it actually has all the strategies um, together that I actually use for my own kids about teaching them about money. So if you want more knowledge, that's a great place to go. A lot of people have been reaching out and asking me uh, and telling me that they love the course or they've started implementing them for their own um, kids. In fact, some of the LinkedIn learning um, staff have even told me that. So that's really exciting. So hopefully you get a chance to take a look at that. I think if you're thinking about a good gift for maybe someone in your life or a family member or, you know, or someone with kids, this is a great idea. All right. So I love this concept. Now, I will tell you, I love the idea of having multiple bank banks, multiple jars in term and, and really having that, that uh, everything labeled, because that's actually a strategy that we even tell adults, if you're managing your money, make sure that your accounts are labeled. So if you're saving for a vacation, label the account vacation fund. So you could do the same thing with your kids. If it's a jar for like Alexa had mentioned for giving that could be called the giving jar or the giving piggy, right? Depending on which way you're using it. Now let's talk about kids and allowances. You know, this is a topic that a lot of parents have a very strong opinion on. Um, some people are team allowance, some people aren't. Alexa, what team are you on? I'm on the team of it depends on your family. <laughs> um, so I got a lot of questions on like, you know, when it comes to allowances, parents get too tied up on how much I should give to my kid. That's like the number one question. Um, financial experts tend to recommend a dollar for the age of the child. So if your child is seven, you would give them $7 a week. For me, when you're teaching your kids financial management and you're applying that to allowance, it matters less how much you decide to give them. And what matters more is how you're using the allowance to teach your child healthy financial habits. So for instance, when you set up their allowance, it should really be a chance or opportunity for you to be like, here's your allowance, but here's how to manage it. Um, so really ask yourself um, whether or not you're using it as a tool, an opportunity to teach your kids. I love that. I love that. That's a, such a, a great answer. And in fact, that's a very similar answer to what I would say too. Um, actually, in, in the course, I actually teach you about um, if you were to do an allowance or not do an allowance, which way you would go. I would. I will tell you personally at home with my little guys, we actually don't do an allowance, but absolutely we do have a family home currency and i use it as a way to teach them about money so lexa's point exactly right it's not so much the amount it's not even for what do you give this allowance for but it's really a teaching moment and and so i i this is so great so let's talk about banking programs for kids this is something i'm sure alexa you at finder this is probably something right up your alley um what are some banking programs for kids that you've seen to be uh, popular yeah so some of the banking programs i think of are they're they call themselves virtual bank accounts and it can get a little confusing when you first see them because you're you know the way that they explain how the account works it makes it look like it's an actual a bank account like a digital bank account but it really isn't it's really a simulation of a real bank account and these types of accounts are good for kids who maybe aren't ready to start managing an actual bank account. Um, an example of one of these accounts is Bankaroo. Um, it's free and it was actually developed by a child. Um, and 
parents can use it. It even allows uh, uh, teachers to use it. There's like a teacher aspect to it that they can bring to the classrooms if teachers are um, looking to teach financial uh, development to their students. Um, but then uh, outside of these programs, um, there are also debit cards for kids. Um, and these debit cards for kids are more so for kids who are ready to graduate to a higher platform in terms of handling an actual bank account. Um, and these platforms also can teach kids how to you know, learn healthy financial habits. Um, and usually these also come with uh, chores and allowances. So Alexa, did you have one of these accounts when you were a kid? No, I don't even think they existed back then. <laughs> I think you were referenced this earlier, um, the envelope budgeting system, um, which also I think um, could be another option. It's like another way almost as the keeping the, the piggy banks, but it could be, you know, allocating your spend category into different buckets on the envelope um but yeah i don't i don't even think this existed uh these types of accounts uh these other cards i think it's great i do i do think that you know kids these days have so many opportunities to learn and sometimes with um, parents and teachers and educators as well i think sometimes we can overthink the process of teaching our children financial literacy. It doesn't have to be this huge discussion, you know, huge family meeting, it doesn't even have to be around the kitchen table. I do think the more comfortable we are talking about our own money uh, in front of our children, that's how they learn. They see mm -hmm. how we process, how we shop, how we make decisions, how we have financial discussions, healthy discussions with our partners and our loved ones. So, you know, especially right now, I think, you know, everybody's under um, probably significant stress, right? Everybody's going through quite a bit now with the pandemic and the holidays and everything else in between. And um, we just want to remember that when we are talking about even the simplest things, like what do you, what do we need to buy, you know, to fill up the, the grocery list this week, or, you know, should we donate um, um, things, you know, to those in need right now? All these little discussions our kids are picking up on. So take a moment to breathe, take a moment to like, don't overthink it and don't feel like there's any urgency, but try to get comfortable with talking about money. And I think that is sort of the first step, because if you can do that, it will not only help yourself, but it help your children as well. But you know what? I feel like it's time to have a little bit of fun. I feel like it's time for a speed round. What do you think, my friends? Around and it's, it's especially fun when Get It Hair walks through the door. And it's so great to see you on Periscope, my friends. Um, you know, this is a this is that fun part where actually Alexa gets one minute to answer our questions, and I want to also invite you to answer the questions as well. And that gives us a chance to really get to know you and get to know our community better. So, Alexa, first question for you is: What's the best gift that you've ever received as a kid? The best gift I've ever received was actually a snow globe. <laughs> a snow globe? Yeah. Oh, cool. it, it's, it's funny because that year, um, they, my parent, I got a guitar as well. Um, so my parents assumed that I would like the guitar um, because I play the guitar. Um, but for whatever reason, I really liked the snow globe that year. It's all the, you know, it, you, you just never can tell with kids, right? It's very special. All right. Thank you for sharing that. What is the second question is the best financial lesson you ever received? I think the best financial lesson I've ever received was how to budget because that really, um, you know, stays with you into your adulthood. Um, and without being able to budget, it's just very difficult to have a overview of your financial assets um it, it really helps you determine what to do with that money absolutely and then third last question what's the most interesting thing that you've done tried or learned during covid um well i actually set up a virtual um 
like via Skype or Zoom, I met with a friend and we built a spreadsheet filled with recipes that we both knew. Um, so every week we would choose a recipe. I would choose a recipe from her list and she would choose a recipe from my list. And every two weeks we would, you know, get on a call and we would teach each other the new recipe. Oh, how fun. So you must have tried a lot of, so let me ask you this. So what's the best thing you've cooked so far then? What's your favorite? Um, I would, I think my favorite that I learned from her was how to do a rosemary lemon salmon. It tastes really good. Amazing. Well, it sounds healthy too. So that, I think that's definitely a win. Well, thank you so much, Alexa, for being here. Let me ask you, how can people learn more about you, follow you, connect with you? Um, tell us what works best for you. Um, yeah, I'm on LinkedIn, but I'm also, um, I work at finder.com and you'll be able to see, you know, spot new articles that drop um, to learn more about, you know, different banking, um, you know, lessons, um, whether it's for kids or for any aspect of your journey. Great, great, thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Alexa, and, and sharing your wisdom with us. And thank you so much for those of you for tuning in as we meet people who are in the trenches, moving mountains and getting stuff done. Because we're talking trending, sharing real stories that you can use. So send me your year end planning questions and comments just by responding here, because we'll be answering many of your most pressing financial questions for you right on the show tomorrow. So thank you so much for watching, supporting our program and sharing the show with those that you love. Be well and I can't wait to see you again tomorrow. Take care now.